Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. I know, I bought a carton of milk this morning and then my picture was on it. <laughs> I seen that in the comments this morning. But uh, guys, have no fear. Your buddy Bob is here. Ain't nothing bad happened. I just kind of got a little side job. They only gave me two weeks to do it, and we have been busy. These guys from Hollywood called me. Oh, yeah. Hollywood. The movies, where they make the movies, you know, over there. And they wanted something. And gave me two weeks to do it. And guess what, guys? I'm going to make it. I'm almost done. There it is. Bam. <laughs> guess what it is? Come on. 765. You're almost out of time. 4321. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Doo doo. Doo doo. Doo 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 doo. Bam. Well, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Bam. Guys, I made a moke troll shark. And they want these they want this for the movies. <laughs> and I don't know. They got a hold of me and wanted it done. Check it out. Here's what's gonna make it go. Got a trolling motor battery. Took this piece of half inch aluminum or three eighths aluminum, bent it. First me and Wes. I couldn't do this alone, I had to have Wes Wes help me. We went and got some two-inch styrofoam. We went on and got two weeks to do this. We didn't have time to order big stuff. We had to go get some foam and get to work. So we cut this foam out. I just drew a picture of a shark out on this foam. Just drew it. Glued uh, four or five of them together. And got us some 36 grit paper on some big old boards, man. It was long boards. But <laughs> And we both went to town. I'm still getting star foam out of my ears and belly button and stuff. <laughs> it was deep. We got it sanded in a day. And we started wrapping cloths around that foam. And then, you know, I carved a trench for this piece of aluminum. It actually goes all the way up into here. And that's why this hatch is shaped like it is. But it goes way up into here. We put some glass in the foam. Then put this bar in. And then glassed on top of it and put like oh it's got like five layers of cloth on it it's like a boat hole <laughs> they, they wanted it tough and this is a fin I actually carved these out of tooling board to kind of make the ball of bottom the back follow the front and I had to put a couple air holes in it yeah it's going to submerge in the water and had to have a place for the air to get out you know, especially like when you lift it up and stuff. And, uh, ah, down there. And, uh, got some buttons from the clothing store. Made them teeth. Sawed them out of there. But anyway, after we got it all laid up, then we took some lacquer thinner and, uh, Took some lacquer thinner and uh, poured it in the back. Melted all that foam out. So now I had to cut a couple holes in the bottom too so you can lift it up out of the water without all the water being in there. But all that stuff came out pretty clean actually. Got me a couple Lexian bulkheads in there to fit my radio box. See? Got my dive planes, dive fins, whatever you want to call them. Okay, I was trying to find waterproof bearings, you know, to go through here. It ain't got this last side up. I got servos ordered, they'll be here tomorrow. And uh, I didn't want to put the servos in. Or didn't want to put the, all the sides in until I get the servos mounted. And uh, 
Oh, so I found the battery. I got this yesterday. This is a jail cell sealed a 12 volt deep cycle battery. And uh, got that thing. And that's a bad boy right there. He said I, that I'd run this shark a couple hours, no problem. He's had throttle control, of course. Plays around full throttle with that trolling motor. It's got like six speeds. I'll show you how that's going to work, too. But this go rod goes right through them bearings. I'm just going to drill and tap a hole right here. Have a rod come through that plastic. So I got these boots. I'm going to put it in there. And uh, that's going to keep it watertight. Okay. Now, if it leaks a little water, that's not going to be the end of the world. Okay. I'm going to put a drain plug right there. I already got one. Stopped by the boat shop yesterday and bought and got one. Hunts around there somewhere. Hunts around there somewhere. But I got a drain plug. All all the electronic stuff is high <coughs> so you know if it gets a little water in there not the end of the world you know just get it when uh, the battery's dead you got to pull it out anyway pull the drain plug and this is what was inside that trolling motor guys and this is going to work out freaking perfect Anyway, a wheel collar. I got a wheel collar that goes right over this. And instead of the set screw, put a bolt with one of them aileron control horn things. And that'll control this motor. But I'm going to mount it up high also. I'm going to put it up. Build a shelf a little high. So, uh, there won't be the only thing down here is is, is servos, and uh, you know it'll there there's watertight somewhat. So if it gets a you know a little water, uh, it won't be the end of the world. Cause the top, I got this all cut, and you know it's all nice fit, and I'm gonna use that uh. Uh, for boats, they use that, you know, radio box tape. <coughs> that, that's waterproof and works really well. But this box is going to be underwater. But as long as there's no major leaks, we'll be good. I'm gluing it all together with this uh, plumber's goop. This uh, plumbing goop. This is good stuff right here, man. And uh, in the back, I got a pull pull set up. I got some big old long threaded wire there. And same thing, two boots. And uh, two boots here. And one for the on and off switch. I don't want to have to open this. We're going to put the, a rod on the on and off switch and put it out the back. So be able to turn it on and off without getting into the hatch. I'll put a little wire out right here to turn it on and off. And uh, that's my shark. Got a nice flanged edge. After I got my first coat of primer on it, I waxed this area up and laid some more glass on there and then glued it on the inside. Uh, worked really good. I didn't put no flange here because I kind of wanted air to escape. Then decided it wasn't going to be enough. I did put some screen in there and paint the screen. But uh, they, they're basically the one the fin. And you know, they want it to submerge. And the dive planes will make it submerge. What are we going to do? So I got a bunch of lead. Okay. 
Uh, the trolling motor is pretty heavy in the back. We got that big old battery, you know, and uh, I got some lead I'm going to put on the bottom. I got some big hunks of lead, big round ones that we can actually form to the belly. And then uh, we can also adjust it with styrofoam, glue and styrofoam up here. Because I want it to sink and set by itself. You know, kind of self suspending with just the fin sticking out of the water. I'll check out what I'm going to do with the receiver. Okay, we want this thing to be able to submerge. Okay, so I got this tube. Remember that I, what I made my uh, chute out of in my F4? I'm going to take this in the house and use my wife's steel mill. I'm going to seal that up real good. Okay. Then I'm going to go like this and cut it off where it needs to be. Drill a hole in my radio box and glue that in my radio box. Right here. I'm going to glue it in right there. Okay, so it sticks up. And I'm going to put my receiver way up here. Okay. Put my receiver on there and just run extension cords down. And uh, that way, my receiver will actually be in the fin. My receiver will actually be way up here. So as I'm going underwater, I still have control of it. Now, I know what you're thinking, wow, Bob, you're going to lose that thing. No, because this fin here, that's still solid foam. All there. I want it to sit level in the water right there. Okay, so as it goes under, it'll get more buoyant and want to come back up. But with the motor and the dive planes, we ought to be able to make it submerged because they want it to submerge and be able to come back up. So, this is my plan. If it does go, when it goes all the way under and you dive it too deep and you lose control, it'll come floating back up because all this is styrofoam. And my receiver is way up there, going to be way up there. And uh, we'll be able to get control of it again. You know what I mean? Well, that's kind of the plan. And that's what I've been doing. Going to Hollywood on you guys. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping it gets me a little more work, to tell you the truth. You know, I think this trolling motor idea was great. Man, we'll just get a trolling motor. <laughs> you know, and then the way I uh, siliconed up them wires really good. I, I squirted that whole tube full of silicone. Because before it had that long tube on it. That kept the water out. Then I'm going to drill me a hole here and a hole on the other side and uh, put me a pull-pull setup right there. Bam. Done deal. Done deal. Baby. But I'll be back to some airplane action soon. My servos will be here tomorrow. That's all I got to do to finish up the radio box, glue that in, run a couple wires, and this thing's done. And I'm just going to sit it inside till they're ready for it. Uh, they're going to tell it's ready for the shoot. Then we're uh, going to deliver it probably. Uh, so, till then, man, I'll be back. I'm going to get this mess cleaned up. I'm just going to set this outside today and let that clear coat get good and dry. And uh, I put some flattening agent in my clear coat. You know, I kind of flattened it out a little, ain't so shiny. I kind of want it like that, you know. Kind of tried to weather it a little bit, you know, and, but uh, I don't know, I'm not the airbrush artist. <laughs> it kind of looks like a shark, like a mean, hungry one. Grr, what do you think, Sammy? She's scared. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll be back to airplane in action real soon. Probably, 
Uh, so we're going to put the radio in this tomorrow, me and Wes, and it'll be done. I'm just going to chuck it in a trailer and and uh, wait and see what they want to do with it. But until then, we'll be back with more Bob TV from the shop.